Hey everybody, welcome to uh, Frequency Separation and Affinity for iPad. And this tutorial, we're gonna show frequency separation. I couldn't help but put the little uh, wow icon and the exclamation point because this is a really advanced uh, tutorial or an advanced process. Even for Photoshop, this is, a, is something that's advanced. And to have the ability to do this on an iPad, it's just really cool, really, really cool. And if you guys see my last video, um, I kind of just get into this and just kind of show you guys affinity for iPad. And I don't even know where to start with it. So uh, this is my first tutorial on it. And you know what? I just started with something advanced and it's not really that hard. It is an advanced thing, but as I'm going to show you, there's a couple things Affinity even made it easier to do than doing it in Photoshop, yet it's still as powerful. So before we even start this tutorial, either you already know how to do this in Photoshop and you're like, oh, wow, I can do this on an iPad or you don't know anything about it. If you don't know anything about it, um, basically, let me turn this layer off and show you basically kind of what it is. Basically, we're going to take a picture and we're going to separate it. We're going to separate the frequencies into a high and a low. The low frequency is basically going to be just the colors and the high frequency is just going to be the details. So what we're going to be able to do here is blur out the skin and really kind of like take care of skin tones and correct them or just make them look smoother without smoothing the details and then vice versa with you know smooth coloring skin underneath we can then go into the details and get rid of uh blemishes and stuff like that and it won't affect the color so this is a really powerful uh thing that we're able to do here and i'm going to show you kind of how to do it in affinity first i'm just going to kind of really really quickly go over uh photoshop like how to do this because I think it's crazy that I can tell you, hey, go look at a Photoshop tutorial and then, you know, you can kind of do the same thing in Affinity. So in Photoshop, basically what you're going to do, let me delete these two layers really quick. Um, and basically, uh, first I had brought in, uh, this is a raw image. It's from a company called Evolution Division that I work for. Uh, I do photography for and uh help out a lot with uh so this is they're like an alternative rave fashion company if you can't tell by the picture but uh anyway we want to go in and clean the face up here what you would do in photoshop is duplicate the layer which we're just going to do anyway to uh you know so we have a second layer here uh you would then blur you would actually duplicate it twice and then you would have a blurred layer and you would do in photoshop um uh the the apply image sorry that took me a sec so in photoshop you would then to the second layer do an apply image and to get the details um so theoretically you can even do it the photoshop way in affinity for ipad which is even more crazier saying oh yeah not only is it you know a really good ipad app for photo editing but yeah there's multiple ways just like photoshop you can do things different ways now however apply image when i was playing around with it um the settings are a little different and i, I couldn't quite emulate the exact way to do it in photoshop so i don't know if it's actually a lot different or not but it doesn't even matter there's no point in showing you guys that because what affinity did is they went ahead and they did a uh, frequency separation uh, plug-in right here. Or not plug-in, effect. Uh, before we get into this really quick, I just want to go back. We're not going to apply this. We're going to go back to layers. First, the reason I brought this one up and made a duplicate is first, before we get into frequency separation, we want to get rid of some of the bigger blemishes here. Frequency separation is great, but... Uh, we do want to like help it out a little bit and get rid of some of the big stuff. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make another new layer 
And we're going to do in painting, which is basically kind of how you paint out the backgrounds and everything. Whoops. Okay. Uh, the reason that didn't work is because I have it on current layer. We're going to go current and below. And we're going to bring the hardness kind of like there. Okay. So I want to get rid of that. Uh, this one I want to get rid of. And there's a couple down here. I can kind of get rid of some of that. But not too much. Just wanted to get rid of really the big blemishes. Okay. Okay. That's good enough. Uh, the before, the after, just quick and easy. Uh, now what I want to do is uh, I just want to merge this layer down, which is over here. Merge down. So now we have our new image here. So now that we have the new image, what we're going to do is we're going to actually apply frequency separation to this now. So basically... What frequency separation is doing here, we have just a few options for uh, adjustments and stuff. Uh, we got the radius, which is going to affect the color side, and that's just going to blur it out. Um, what you want to do is kind of blur it just to the point of where you can't really see those skin textures, and they start kind of blurring together, but you don't want to go too crazy with it. Uh, tolerance is going to be affecting th this side. Um, so I'm going to keep it at 50, you know, somewhere around there, kind of depending on the image, you know. Uh, and then we have protect. Protect's just like taking out the whites and stuff is from what I can see. I'm not 100% sure what that's doing, but it looks like it's, uh, you know, I got to look into that. I'm not exactly sure what protect is doing, but... Uh, I'll put that in the comments when I figure that out, but it's not really necessary right now. Um, we're going to hit uh, the check mark to actually apply this, and then we're going to go to our layers. And now we can see we have a high frequency and a low frequency. What I want to do is make a new uh, uh, folder here, and just I just want to put both these in the folder. So we can turn that on and off as we uh, go through the tutorial here. So the first thing I want to show you is the low frequency. So what this allows us to do is go through with the selection tool. As you can see, there's just some like color issues going on here. It's, it's not as smooth as it could be. So we're going to kind of go through with the selection tool. Kind of get this cheek here. Uh, make sure we feather it. You know, let's go 20 feather. Uh, now what we want to do is go back to uh, the effects or the filters again. And we want to Gaussian blur this. And as you can see, here it is with nothing. The more we kind of pump this Gaussian blur up to a point, you know, you don't want to go too crazy with it. But, um, you know, pumping this up a little bit, like 10 pixels, and then uh, now going back and deselecting. Oops, I did that in the wrong order. Let me undo that. Uh, okay, go up 10 pixels, hit the the uh, check mark to actually apply it, then go ahead and deselect. And now if we go back and forth, well, ignoring the blemishes, the big blemishes that we removed, you can see that this is actually smoothing the skin out quite a bit. So let's do one more here. Uh, I'm not going to do this whole, whole picture just to keep this tutorial short, but I will show you the before and after of uh, a different one. So going through here, uh, gradient blur, uh, 10 pixels. We can kind of play with it a little bit still. Uh, this one I'm going to go a little higher with. So we're going to go 12 pixels and deselect. So again, 
going back to the layers and turning it on and off, you can see it's just blending that skin really good. So that's the low pay. And, and as you noticed, it didn't affect any of the, the skin here. So you can still see the pores. You can still see all of the, uh, uh, what's going on with the skin. So let's kind of get into that really quick. So now we can go to the high frequency and okay. So I should have showed you this before. So basically this is your low pass and then this is your high pass. You can see all that detail in there. Um, and can I turn it off? Okay. Well, I guess it doesn't quite work the same if it's all the way off, but, um, that details all on a separate layer, super contrasty. So what we want to do now to kind of get some of these smaller blemishes out, because you wouldn't want to go through with uh, the other tool, getting out small blemishes. That's just for the big stuff. Um, now what we can do is we can use the clone stamp tool to kind of get rid of some of these other ones. Uh, when you get the clone stamp tool, you want to basically hold with your finger to pick a spot. And then you kind of want to just start going over and it's going to take the skin tones from over here and bring them over here. So see how that's getting rid of some of the smaller skin tones. Uh, the cheek is really nice. There's not a lot of blemishes here. The nose, we can see like a couple. So we're just going to kind of go on and uh, now we're getting some of the skin texture, some of the smaller blemishes taken care of and as you can see it's not affecting the color so let me show you a really good example of that because the high high frequency is only black and white it's not affecting color so normally with the clone stamp tool you would be able to clone let's say i want this lip over here you know it would clone the whole photo let's go ahead and kind of pick right in here and go on the cheek here. And as you can see, it's bringing the cheeks texture in, or I'm sorry, it's bringing the lips texture, but it's not bringing the color in. So let's just undo that. So that's how this is working. It's keeping both things separate. Um, again, to keep this tutorial short, I'm not really gonna go 100% through this. I'll show you the before and after of the one I did uh, previously. However, I'm going to give you one more tip in, uh, in how to really kind of enhance your re your photo retouching. Um, we're going to do a dodge and burn and I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick that, um, you can't do. I'm just going to go ahead and merge this down. Um, so Basically, dodge and burn is a way to get highlights and lowlights, you know, and darks into a picture. So what we can do here is kind of use the, uh, you know, kind of keep everything low. This is just going to dodge your picture. Again, if you don't know exactly what dodge is, uh, you can look up other Photoshop tutorials. How cool is that? That we can go into that. Uh, affinity thing right here. If you're using an Apple Pencil, uh, this little thing right here is going to give you your pressure sensitivity. I don't want pressure sensitivity on this. I just want to be able to kind of like go over what I'm currently doing. So I want to make that circle big. I want to kind of go down to just 10% here. And I want to go in and kind of get this eye. I'm going a little higher. You know, bring that cheekbone up. Now, the problem with doing it this way is that it's on the actual layer. If I go in Affinity and make a new layer, it doesn't work because there's no pixels to affect and there's no, like, drop down. Uh, you know, this is how you do it on uh, uh, to affect the layer under it. So I'm going to show you a workaround to that. And uh, it's, it's a workaround that you can do in Photoshop that I do anyway. And I figured, you know what? Why not show you how to do it? Uh, here, we're going to actually go back through. And it even says what it's doing, like dodge brush. So we can just easily go back to the uh, where the merge is. And 
Uh, I'm going to go back to the layers. I'm going to make a new layer. What I want to do here is I want to fill it with 50% gray. So let's go to our colors. And right up here, we could go through. And we could do it through any of these, even these. We could, you know, uh, 100 or 255 is pure white. Uh, zero is black. So we can do a division of that. It'd be like 127.5. You can't do 0.5 in here. But we could still get it close. But easy, even easier, we're just going to go to grayscale. And we're going to go to 50% right there. And then, bam, our color is gray. And we are in the paint bucket. We have made it gray. And now what we're going to do is go back to layers. And we are going to go from normal to soft light. Okay. So now that soft light, uh, we're going to turn the layer on and off. And we shouldn't be able to see anything. It should make no difference whatsoever. So now that that's that, now we can go back to the dodge and burn and we could do exactly what we were doing uh, on its own layer. Let's go into burn. Okay. So anyway, now we can pick uh, midtones, highlights, or shadows. Let's go with the shadows here and we can really kind of uh, go in. Oh, and that's the other cool thing is when you really get into detail on affinity, uh, it goes into full screen or I'm sorry, when you really get into it and you go by the, uh, you know, the selections, they go away, which is a really, really cool thing. Um, and then let's just kind of go into the Dodge and, you know, say now we're going to go from midtones. We're going to go to highlights. We're going to bring that cheek up. We're going to bring the, the forehead here, pop all this out, uh, maybe pop the eyes out a little bit. So you kind of get what's going on. And then I'm going to show you one more cool thing is let's kind of go small here and let's actually turn the pressure on and let's do the highlights in the hair here because this is something that was a pain in the butt to do with the mouse if you didn't have a Wacom tablet but now it's just awesome and we can really just throw some highlights in that hair now, that last one might have been a little too crazy. But anyway, so let's look at the on and off. So now we can turn it on and off and see what we're doing instead of going, 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 and going on the actual picture and then, you know, realizing we went too far. So we did go pretty far on that. This is a pretty harsh tone. Um, let's do this real quick. If you go down to the viewer and you hit 100%, now we can see the 100% pixels uh, sometimes with... Uh, you know, I, I did notice when I'm on the iPad versus the computer, you're zooming in a lot. And even though this is a full raw picture on the iPad pro, you're still, you know, you're, you're, it's looking pixelated because you're so zoomed in, uh, versus like a computer screen where you don't, I, I don't know, maybe you do zoom in, but anyway, regardless, uh, if you go to the navigator and hit hundred percent then you can get a good pure look at, you know, your work. And if it's too much, if it is too much, now it's on a separate layer. Now we can go down, we can pull the opacity down. Uh, we can do different things to it. We can even go so far as to uh, go on that layer, turn this other layer off. You could edit this and that will drop it down again. That, that was a bonus tip. Here we are in the, uh, the original one that I did. And this one's a lot more, uh, you know, it, it did a lot more work to it. Um, this is before and after. Uh, so as you can see, I want to just kind of wrap this up, but frequency separation advanced for Photoshop users in general, uh, really advanced to be able to do it on an iPad. It's awesome. Uh, I know we kind of rushed through a lot of this, but I hope you guys really like this tutorial and I hope, uh, you get how to just get in and start doing it, start trying it for yourself, get those skin tones really good and keep that detail. And uh, I'll see you guys next tutorial. We're going to keep digging into this application. See you soon.